Hey everybody, I'm Paul from Legacy Lumber Canadian Woodworks. I literally cut my sawmill in half so I could cut big logs up to 42 inch diameter. And in this video, I'm going to show you every single step of the way on how you can do it with your own wood miser. Hope you enjoy. We're going to cut this log. Lumber. All right, everybody, let's go log hunting. Oh, got to put it in neutral. Ooh, this does this. Hey, let's go. Okay, once I get the log on the sawmill, the fence is stopping it from rolling that way, but I always put my clamp up first thing that way this log can't come back towards us. And we're actually bigger than I can sawmill in the one direction, so I gotta measure and see where we're at. We might have to roll the log a little bit to get it to fit through the mill, because as you see, this is a huge log. It's, it's a big one. Okay, folks, you heard me right. I literally cut my sawmill in half so I could cut bigger logs. Right when I got this sawmill, and this is a 1992 Wood Miser LT40, fully hydraulic, which is nice. Uh, it could only cut 28 inch diameter logs through and through. That means like right through your throat, and we specialize in live edge. So I had an idea right off, right off the, the, the tip of my, tip of my dome, tip of my hat, an idea that came to me in my sleep, we'll say. Let's cut the sawmill right here with an angle grinder. Let's make an insert that can go inside this box tube. That way I could pull out two bolts, slide the whole end out to the extended mode, bolt it back together, cut at 42 inches in width. I could also pull those bolts out, slide it back in, and cut stock width. Because when I bought my sawmill, I had probably 60 plus blades that came with it, which were stock length. So I still wanted to be able to use those. Some people will cut this, extend it, and weld it. I decided to be able to go back to stock width as well as up to 42 inches wide. To get blades, I went to a blade size that's stock with wood miser. So it's a 184 inch long blade instead of the 158 inch long blade that I normally use. So getting blades was not an issue. You can get them from virtually any manufacturer. And we're going to take you the through the process right now of taking it from its normal cutting mode to the extended mode. So let's do that. Then we're going to cut some wood, make some sawdust, see what's inside that log. I know it's covered in snow. It's really dirty on the end, but I think it's beautiful on the inside. It's the inside that counts, folks. Don't judge a book by its cover. Let's get some wrenches. So all we have to do to get it into extended mode is get two 5 eighths of an inch socket wrenches, take out these two bolts, and we're going to be sliding the whole head to its extended width. 
put the bolts back in, tighten them up. Let's do it. So this is actually a follow-up video. I cut my sawmill in half. This is just a complete guess, but it's probably four years ago now, maybe even five or six years ago. And I made the insert, like I said, I wanted to be able to slide it back to stock mode and then extend it out to my full 42 inch uh, cut throat on the sawmill. So I decided to make an insert that went inside the box tube. And that way you could slide it back and forth, as you saw, very, very easily. Now I made this out of aluminum. I don't exactly know why. I, I kind of did it because I knew I could machine it if I needed uh, easier than steel. So I bought a, a billet of, of aluminum. I actually did have it machined at a, a local machinist down to size because it was bigger than I needed. Um, was not that expensive. It was actually somebody I knew. So, uh, you know, he probably got a cutting board or something like that. Thank you, Eric, by the way, Express Manufacturing. And as you saw, it's so easy to slide. We did a relief. It's not a full, um, full blank. So there's not contact everywhere. I've kind of hollowed out the center here on the back side, as well as the top side. I have a little groove and a little groove. That way it was really easy to tweak this. And I just did that with uh, uh, actually my router. Like I had Eric do some of the stuff, but you can see the, the pattern on here. I actually routered that down. I do definitely recommend measuring your own sawmill though when you make your own billet, if you're gonna do it the same way, because maybe it's a little bit different. Mine was five and three quarters by one and five eighths of an inch wide. And basically um, I measured how far I wanted to go out, and then the maximum I could put it back in. So this billet, the piece of aluminum, as long as possible to go back in so it's nice and rigid. rigid. So now all I gotta do is put the two bolts back in, and we're good to go. We're in the extended mode cutting. We're bolted up, we're in extendo mode, now we need a saw blade. Let's go get one. One saw blade. So now just like a regular wood miser, regular sawmill, we're gonna put the blade on. And I will have to adjust the tracking a little bit because I am not a rocket scientist and I don't build pianos for a living. So this is uh, slightly off. So because of the tension, the head can be a little bit easily adjusted with the angle of this wheel. So we're gonna put the blade on, we're gonna see how it's tracking and then we're gonna adjust that tracking. All right, the blade is on. Now we're just gonna tension it. So right here, we're over a quarter inch, even three eighths of an inch out from the bottom of the gullet to the blade. Ideally, we have about an eighth of an inch here. So I'm gonna adjust the tracking on this wheel now to hopefully bring that back. So as I mentioned, this is a 1992 wood miser. It was already very old when I bought it. The gentleman told me he cut one million board feet with the sawmill before I even got it. And you know what, the tracking lever was always broken, never there, so I just use a wrench. And I forget which direction to go, so I just go one way about half a turn, and I see what the blade does. So let's try this out. Probably that. That is perfect now. Perfect. So traditionally on a wood miser sawmill, I like putting the narrower end of the log to this end of the sawmill, that way you know your height really well. When you have logs like this and you're pushing it to the max, I like to have the widest end to the words this end, because that way you can visually set your cut up and you know you're gonna be able to make it, rather than going through halfway or three quarters of the way and then the log becoming too wide for the actual sawmill. Just a disaster then, not a fun situation. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna engage the motor and we're gonna cut our first slab, let's do it. All right, so I've discovered it's definitely a maple log. We're gonna see what it looks like on the inside. Now, I worked by myself for many, many, many years. It is obviously nice having a helper. Having a helper at a sawmill where, 
where especially the one guy running the sawmill really knows what he's doing. It's almost like having three people. But I'm going to show you, uh, we're, going to, we're going to go through this log in a way that I'm working by myself. So the way I do it is I'm going to put the forks right up here next to the slab, hop out, go on behind, and basically push the slab onto the forks, because obviously I can't lift this. I know I'm strong, I'm very, very strong, but I can't lift this. This is too heavy for me. But it's going to be exciting. We're going to see what's inside this log. I think I've owned this log for about three or four years. Let's go spalting. All right, so we've cut as far down as we can before hitting the fences, the fences that are 11 inches. But that's good because most of the wood's been removed from the log. We've probably cut about two thirds of it. I'm now gonna grab the log with the forks of the tractor, pull it away from the sawmill, and roll it out there on a set of four by fours. We're gonna bring it back on here. We're gonna finish up cutting. Everything's going fantastic. The cuts are flat. The wood's beautiful. And uh, you know what? It's just an all around good day. So everyone, thanks for watching. Let's get the rest of this log cut up. Well, let's flip it first. So the reason why we have to roll the log over is because my upright fences are 11 inches tall. As soon as I move those fences, uh, the log's going to move a little bit and, it'll, and your cut's not going to be flat anymore, it's not going to be parallel. So when you have to lower your fence, you need to lower the fence, take the log off, roll it over, and now it's sitting nice and flat back on the bed and we're going to set up for the final cuts and we're going to get about another three or four slabs out of this. So let's make some sawdust and wrap this one up. So that's it, the log is fully cut up with a wood miser that normally can only cut 28 inches wide. Uh, with that modification, I can cut 42 inches wide. This is a follow-up video. I did that modification where I cut the sawmill in half and made that insert so I can slide it back and forth. Four or five years ago, I'd have to actually check when I did that. I've had zero issues with that. So for all of you out there with a wood miser, as a reminder, this is an LT40 from 1992. Pretty sure they're very similar from the early 90s up into the early 2000s. I'm pretty sure you can do this. We literally cut it with an angle grinder and a, and a cutoff wheel. We had it strapped to a skid as well as the tractor forks while we were making the cut. That way, once it broke loose, it didn't just fall onto the ground, obviously, and it is pretty heavy. So it was kind of controlled how we cut it. Had the insert fabricated, put it all together, drilled some holes, put some bolts in it. And you know what, Bob's your uncle. You can cut some huge, huge logs. I do see some wood misers out there where they've extended it up, up to 52 or, or even wider, 
where they actually weld it solid because I wanted to go down the road still and I wanted to use all the blades that came with the sawmill um, uh, in its normal mode. And we do most of our sawmilling with this sawmill in the normal mode. So we're cutting five quarter, you know, cherry, walnut, all sorts of smaller logs, 14 inch, 18 inch diameter. And it, it does, uh, you can cut faster and quicker in those kind of widths. Whereas in the long mode, you do have to do a slow cut. So you look at a log like this, and you can get through with one blade before it dulls, but usually it's actually two blades. Sometimes there'll be metal in the log, sometimes some dirt, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's just to do, I'm cutting very, very slow. So if you see in the video also, I'm always, I have a little bit of pressure pushing the wood miser because it's actually a belt drive. And it, when it's cutting very, very slow, it, it kind of slips a little bit. So I have a little bit of pressure on the saw head. Um, Whereas when you're in regular mode, you're going to be cutting faster and the sawmill, you know, obviously it drives itself once you go a little bit quicker. Success. We got beautiful lumber. We're going to get this stickered. We're going to get this air dried. If you don't already know, Legacy Lumber is my other company. We are a sawmill. We're a couple kilns. We process the lumber on our CNC, our planer, all that good stuff. And uh, we have dealers across North America from New Brunswick, Ontario, opening soon in Alberta. If you're interested, get in touch with us, maybe even Vancouver out west. We now have a dealer in Los Angeles, one in Texas, and one in Boston in, in the USA. So thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, this was a fun one. I don't get much time back on the sawmill. Really, really had a good time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Everyone, make it a great one. Gentlemen, we're good? Back to the sawmill with our log. Gonna cut it up into lumber.